Hey, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So I'm back again with the custom build. I've got a clear coat on it. Started installing some frets. I masked off the fretboard and dusted some clear on the edges of the binding over here. So that's going to have a nice little bit of a gloss to it as well. And the owner wants this to have a matte finish on the back of it. So what I'm going to do is mask off the binding so the binding has a shine to it, but the back is going to have a matte finish to it. That's not going to be a big deal. Clear is done on this. I've got the devil and chilling in the other room, been doing a little bit of work on that as well. I'm in really like no hurry or rush to get things done because when you start, you know, rushing shit, you start getting sloppy and I don't want to get sloppy. So I've been taking a little bit of a break from YouTube. If you notice, my videos have been kind of uh, really distanced from each other. I am not putting up videos like I used to do because number one, well, views are one thing as far as uh, the longer you leave a video up before you put a next video up, the more views you get on that last video. So I've been kind of doing that. Plus, I've been doing a lot of shit around the house over here. I've been kind of working uh, kitchen time, you know, as far as upgrading and shit like that goes. It's going to be coming up soon. Uh, so I've been preparing for that. I've been trying to hunt down a dining room set because I did, what was it, uh, before Christmas, I think it was? I ended up painting putting in carpet, getting new furniture for the front room, which is the living room, uh, getting rid of the old dining room set, getting rid of the old furniture. And what I went with was kind of like a retro, new retro style uh, furniture for the front room. And I'm trying to find a dining room set that kind of matches the furniture that I have because the two rooms are tied in together as far as being somewhat one room. There's kind of a, a split in the rooms, uh, not really a really uh, small doorway, but a wide opening. So it looks like the two rooms are together. And I've been trying to find the dining room set that matches that style of furniture that I have or something close to it, and I'm not having any luck with that. So that's still on the process. Um, plus, you know, have you ever heard the expression running your car to the ground basically to the point where uh it's in well, not inoperable but undrivable i kind of did that with my saturn now it's a 2008 saturn view and uh it's been a great vehicle uh, other than normal maintenance like i just put new tires on there like literally just put new tires on it uh i did new brakes on there i did a new rack for the steering because the steering column when it met the rack the knuckle that uh the rack go the steering column goes into on the rack the knuckle was gone on the rack it was kind of chewed up so that had to get replaced um and it's starting to turn into a little bit of a money pit you know tires on that thing was 1700 bucks a new rack on that thing was uh was, what was that, $1,800 or something like that for a new rack. Brakes, that's, you know, 200 and some odd dollars for brakes. So it's starting to turn into a little bit of a money pit. The interior is in decent shape. The exterior is in decent shape on the car as far as rust, dents, and shit like that goes. There really isn't that much other than the back tailgate of the uh, SUV. Um, they put this stupid plastic thing on the back above the license plate, and each corner of it, rubs as the vehicle kind of like you know it, it it it's a unibody so it shifts and moves just a little bit and it rubs a little bit and it starts to form rust i haven't seen one that hasn't now the biggest issue with that car is the undercarriage the uh floor pans are in like mint condition the cage around the squirrel cage or the cage around the motor for and it has this front suspension and everything else tied into it that's in good shape but the ass end of the vehicle where the rear suspension is um what they did is instead of putting a full frame welded to the uh underbody of the vehicle they put a partial for it's a unibody and what it is is like a c-channel and it's welded up and you got your suspension and shit tied into that. Well, that rusted out. 
So it's like, how the hell did this shit rust out? But the rest of it looks like it's in mint condition. It's like, what the fuck? Well, it's a sea channel. Water sits in that with sea channel as long with salt and shit from the ground, and it rotted out. So that's got to be redone now. Instead of putting you know over two thousand dollars worth of work into that, cutting out the old, uh, cutting out the old, prepping for the new, and welding putting the rear suspension back together and on the vehicle and then doing painting or, well, it would be painted and then it would be undercoated. Uh, instead of doing that, I'd rather put my money into a new vehicle. But the issue that I'm having with finding a new vehicle is I don't care for all this bullshit that they're tying into. Uh, it's just more crap to fuck up, okay, on these new vehicles. I don't like it. I'm kind of old school. I like the old 70s style, 60s styles as far as vehicles go, even some of the 80s style I like. All this new bullshit is kind of like, even the SUV that I have now, the Saturn. All right, I like it, but as far as body style goes, it doesn't have any body style to it, not like the older vehicles. But because of times have changed and shit like that, instead of going backwards, trying to move forward, the new vehicles have a lot of the interior components tied into the radio, okay? And even some of the engine suspension uh, are tied into the audio system of the vehicle, which really doesn't have to be. That's just kind of like showing off. It's like, look what I can do. You know, I can display the tire pressure on, on show each tire and each, you know, what each tire has as far as pressure goes. I don't care about that shit. That shit is like, like, you know, obsolete to me. So I've been on a hunt for a new vehicle and my vehicle of choice of what I want to buy is like, uh, was like a 2003 or, or better or not better, but, uh, older, uh, Chevy Astro van. All right. And so I've been on a hunt for a Chevy Astro van, kind of like a conversion style van, where it's got the uh, the nice interior inside of it, the nice exterior, probably the running boards and shit like that on it, um, the flares around the wheels, the nicer wheels. But trying to find something like that with less or low mileage on there is like you know very hard to do. I found one that's a cargo in fucking mint condition and the owner ended up doing an under uh underbody uh spray as far as the so it doesn't rot out and shit uh undercoating and the inside of it is just a, a, an open space there's there's no carpeting there's no panels there's no nothing and i was looking at it and it's like it's got like forty seven thousand miles on it so I was like, okay, is this a engine rebuild 47,000 miles or a new engine 47,000 miles? What is this? So I contacted the owner and shit like that. And he's like, no, it's like it's it was used as a company truck, but it was the less used company truck. It was more of the owner who drove this truck. And I was like, okay, fine. And uh, it's like, well, I can start from scratch on the inside. We did me and my father when my father had his old old 70s style cargo van with a three-speed transmission uh shifter on the column steering column we ended up carpeting that we turned it into a custom van and it's like well i can do this shit myself that's not that, that big of a deal all the mounts for mounting seating and shit like that i could pick up uh, go to a junkyard and find an old Astro van that's got decent interior and shit, and you know, reupholster it myself, and you know, install it in the back for a fold-out bed or you know, just having a bench seat back there. Because what I want to do is all the audio system is going to be all you know upgraded, and I want to put like a thirty-five or something like that inch flat screen inside there. I want to put a refrigerator inside of it, uh, you know, a small small refrigerator from we go on long trips and uh you know but that's why i'm looking for something that has low mileage on it but shipping it from say texas or wherever out here you know is going to be you know pretty good lump sum it's like yeah i don't really don't want to go that route so what i've been looking at is more of the suvs and i'm not really into um Hyundai's, Kia's, you know, I'm not into that shit. 
uh, Mazdas. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm more of a GM, Ford, Chrysler. Period, and that's what I stuck with all my life: GM, Ford, and Chrysler. So what I'm looking at right now is probably a Ford Explorer. Well, we call it the Ford Exploder, but it's the Ford Explorer or uh, the Edge Sport. So I've been looking at some of them, and uh, like the first thing I want to do when I get it is I'm going to rip out the audio system and start from scratch. But trying to find uh, something that is, like I said, doesn't have a lot of integrated shit. I found some aftermarket um car stereos that are android operating operating system on them which works out perfect because my phone's android too and i can mimic everything from my phone and display and all to the stereo that actually has some of the um the options for pacific vehicles that displays on the screen of the car and that and another thing is the screen is like a separate part of the radio now on a lot of these vehicles. So instead of having a double din head unit, which is about like yay big, uh, like I have in my Saturn, um, with like a, I don't know if it's a seven, I think it's a seven inch screen on it. Uh, you have a screen that is located higher and then you have your controls for your stereo lower. And the way some of these dashboards are set up is, is you have like not a shelf, but a panel that sticks up that's only like that thick. And the display is inside of that panel. It's like, yeah, that's not going to work. You know, I don't want that either. So I've been kind of just looking for, you know, what I'm interested in and shit like that. All right, so back to the guitar stuff. Let me get my glasses. I'll show you what's going on. I have to shut off the exhaust fan that's in this room. All right, so... If you hear anything else that's running, the furnace is not on, but the computer's on, so you might hear a little bit of the fans on that. So what's going on with this neck? Well, I'm trying to hunt down as far as anything I can see over here, like a brad nail. Because there's something going on here where, you tell me, all right? So I have, if I get this fucker off of here. All right, so these are the magnets that you would take out of a hard drive. They're pretty fucking strong, all right? So if I put on here, there's where the truss rod is, all right? But if I stick it on some of the edges over here, it doesn't pick up anything on the fret. It wants to move right over to where the truss rod is. I'm using stainless steel frets, you know, St uh, Stumac stainless steel frets. Um, I don't feel anything on the side over here as far as anything grabbing, but again, that could be a stainless steel brad nail that is on the edge of this binding over here, and then what he did was um, filled it, but I don't even see any filler as far as what he did goes. Now, I know that you can take, I don't know if you guys ever tried this before or seen this before, but if you want to hide a brad nail, if you get some of the real thin and it come, they're done with a gun, so you have to have a brad gun in order to do this. But they're real thin brats. All right? and as long as you're not going into real, 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 real hardwood, which this is kind of hardwood, uh, you can actually hide that uh, hole by wetting where the wood is, where that nail went in, wetting that, letting it swell, and taking a razor blade and kind of moving the fibers to cover up that hole. So when you put your finish on top of that, uh, sand it down smooth and put your finish on it. It hides it perfect. I don't think the guy did that with this. Okay, I really don't. But I went over, cleaned out all of the fret grooves with my, you know, the tools that I've got. I have a tool here that basically what it does is it measures how deep the fret slot is so I can put, no, so I know if, um, I have the right depth, I'm able to put the frets in. And it comes up where uh, I've got the depth, but something is stopping me from putting them in the frets. And the edge over here is where I got the problem. This side here is not the problem. I cleaned out the slots. There was a lot of glue in these corners, okay? Probably because of putting on the binding as wood glue. So it kind of uh, chipped out a little bit easy, not... Um, 
not as bad as like CA glue would be. CA glue you, tends to be a lot harder and a lot harder to chip out. The When you got dried up uh, wood glue, it just seems to be a lot easier to chip that out. So I'm going down the line here. So you can hear this is pretty nice. Now right here is where they put two nails for the uh, either um, to secure the fretboard down because it was up here too. Either to secure the fretboard down or the pins that are sticking up out of the neck in order to line up and secure the fretboard down too. So I got those two there. This isn't bad. This isn't bad. That's not bad. All right, listen to this right here in this corner. Good, 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 good. This is where the pins are. See this one I can't even get inside there because it's it just I don't know what this guy did over here, but there's something inside of this. But this one here, I can feel it and you can hear it. It sounds like that there's I can feel it with the tip of this, and I don't know if I'm ruining my tip. So I'm afraid to even like try to use my saw inside of here because I can feel it as I'm going, as I'm rubbing it on that corner over there, I can feel that there's something gripping these teeth that doesn't feel like it is wood. And then the sound from this, I mean, just, just doesn't sound right as far as, uh, I don't know, it just never ran into anything like this before so I don't know if he put a brad here and a brad here to hold the binding in probably keep it in place masked it to hold it from moving around some you know while he's doing other shit to the body or whatever um, but this fret over here was either one of these two that I really had a shit shit time fucking trying to put it in and I wasted a lot of fret material over here that's good waste a lot of fret material over here in order to try to get a fret inside. Now, I am putting glue inside of here, so these do not move at all. Um, yeah, it's been kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass. It's, it's just weird. So I got to look into this more and see if I, I've got a... Um, like a magnifying glass type eyepiece, all right, that I can't remember how many times uh, zoom it's got on there. But I want to try to get as much light as I can get inside there because if it is something metal, it's going to reflect the light. And I got to see what the hell it is and what I can do about it. And I don't want to cut the tang on each side of the fret so damn short to where it's like, you know, just the middle piece is grabbing on there and there's nothing on each side to hold the fret in. I don't want to do that. And I started to do that when I was over here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but you see how far that tang is. I don't know if you can see it or not. See how far that tang is compared to the other side. That was over here because there was something on over here that was causing the fret from not going down. It wasn't glue. So I can't figure out what the hell it was. Uh, I would use the tool for measuring the fret slot and you could feel it as you're going over to the edge you could feel it go up on an angle and it's like wait a minute here something is wrong the other frets feel pretty good but it's just this one and the one up here that i noticed that feel like there's something in the fret slot so that's what i've been doing and that's what I, what's been going on um this is the stock for the fret wire i'm using the stumac fret wire which is this what i've got going on right now is the same fret wire as what was on here as far as the size and shape goes um these are stainless steel i don't know what the other stuff was so yeah fun shit fun shit fun shit and i never came across anything like this before so i'm going to end up uh continue to install these frets but again, you know, I'm in no rush, so I'm not pushing anything here. 
Uh, I do have to get that Devlin uh, finished and out of here, back to the owner. Um, but at the same time, I got a lot of other shit going on. At, you know, yay. All right, you guys take it easy. Have a good one, and I will catch up with you all later.